One of the most hotly debated topics within a study of end time events is the question, will the church go through the seven year tribulation period and experience the devastating wrath and judgment from God? Or will the church be raptured beforehand? That is the question we want to finally ask and answer today on The Beat. Hey everyone, my name is Alan Parr. Thank you all so much for tuning into The Beat. If this is your first time here on this channel, we answer frequently asked questions about the Christian faith. We talk about dating and relationships from a biblical perspective, and we do all sorts of other Bible-based videos. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Okay, so if you have been subscribed and been following for a little while, you know that we've been in a short study on end time events, and the most popular question that has come up in all of the videos is, hey, what is your opinion on whether the church is going to be raptured before the tribulation period or is the church going to have to go through all the crazy things that we see that are going to happen between Revelation chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 19. So what I want to do in this video is I want to first, number one, talk about the concept of the rapture. Where does it come from? What scriptures does it come from? Second of all, I want to give you a brief, and I do mean brief, overview of the three major positions on the rapture. And then I want to give you five reasons why I personally believe that the church is not going to have to go through the seven year tribulation period. Okay, so some people will say that, you know what, the rapture is not in the Bible because the word rapture does not appear. Well, neither does the word Trinity, neither does the word Bible, but the concept of the rapture is, and it is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. But let me give you a little bit of context. What was happening at the church of Thessalonica was that uh, Christians were dying here and there. And so the believers at that church were worried that their deceased brothers and sisters would not be able to take part in the uh, rapture that was to come. They thought that they had probably are going to miss out on that. And so Paul comes along and he wants to assure them that they were not going to miss out on the rapture. This is what it says in verse 15. Paul says, we tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven in a commanding shout with the voice of an archangel with the trumpet call of God. Now, listen to the order. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so the idea here that Paul is saying here is that the order is that those who have died are going to first uh, be resurrected from their graves. And then those of us who are alive when the rapture comes, if we're still alive, we're going to be caught up together. Now, this word caught up is where the idea of the rapture uh, comes from. It's the word uh, that means to be snatched away or to be caught up. And so this is the idea of the rapture. Now, there are three different basic views on the rapture. The first is what's called the pre trip tribulation view. And this is the idea that the church is going to be raptured before or pre the tribulation period. So they're not going to have to experience those seven years. The second major view is what's called the mid tribulation view. And this is the idea that the church is going to have to go through the first three and a half years of the tribulation before things get really, really bad and goes into the great tribulation. But right around three and a half years into the tribulation, uh, God is going to spare the church and he's going to rapture the church in the middle of the seven year tribulation period. And then the third and final view is what's called the post tribulation view. And this is the idea that God is going to allow the church to go through the seven years of tribulation. And at the end of the tribulation, he's going to rapture the church. But then the church is going to come right back down at the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so what I want to do now is I want to give you the five reasons why I personally believe that the church is not going to go through the tribulation period. So this is the pre-tribulation view. The first reason is a pretty simple one, and that is the idea that the word church does not appear in the book of Revelation from chapters 4 all the way through chapter 19. But if you look at the first three chapters of the book of Revelation, the word church is mentioned 19 times, which lets us know that uh, Jesus is, is addressing the churches and how the churches should respond during this time and how they should live during the church age, the age in which we live in today. But uh, if you notice chapter four and specifically in chapter six, when all of the events of the tribulation begin to occur, the church is nowhere mentioned again until we see the church in uh, chapter 19. And even 
there we see the church not suffering but celebrating because there is going to be a uniting between us and Jesus Christ forevermore. And so this is the first reason why I believe that the church is not going to go through the tribulation period because the church is nowhere to be found in between chapters 4 and chapters 19. The second reason is that I believe that the Bible is crystal clear that God is not going to allow his church, his believers, his bride, if you will, to experience divine wrath for no reason. There are several scriptures that I want to read to you that make it very clear. The first one is in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, which says, Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also, here it is, keep you from, not in or not during, but keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. Then Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and 10, he says, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who, listen to this, rescues us from the coming wrath. Paul also said in the same book, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here are some more. Romans chapter 5, verse 9 states, Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6 states, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes upon those who are Christian? No, those who are disobedient. Colossians 3, 4. Finally, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will go through the tribulation period? No, it says that we will appear with him where? In glory. So again and again, we see there are scriptures all sprinkled throughout the New Testament that seem to be very clear that God loves us and values us enough as his bride that he's not going to allow us to go through the tribulation period for no reason. The third reason why I believe that the church will not go through the seven-year tribulation period is because we must distinguish between the rapture and the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is where many people get very confused about end time prophecy. So let me help you out just a little bit. In Matthew chapter 24, if you read all of those events, it seems pretty clear that you know what? All these things are going to happen and then it says the end will come and Jesus is going to return. That's because in Matthew chapter 24, at the end of that chapter, Jesus is not talking about the rapture. He's talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ, which does does occur after the seven years of tribulation that are going to be happening on the earth. So what I want to do now is I just want to give you several differences that you can see in the Bible so that you can clearly see that these two things are two separate events. Difference number one, the Bible says that the rapture is going to occur in an instant at the twinkling of an eye. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 52. But the Bible says the second coming of Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, it says, look, he comes with the clouds of heaven and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. And so one event is going to happen very quickly in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, and the other is going to be a public event for everyone to see. The second difference is that the rapture, we will meet Jesus in the clouds, but in the second coming, when he comes to the earth, he's going to step foot on the earth and he's going to actually. Uh, descend to the Mount of Olives. Notice what Zechariah chapter 14 verse 4 says about the day of the Lord. It says, on that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem. Then the Lord my God will come and with all his holy ones with him, which is another difference between the rapture and the second coming. The rapture, Jesus becomes for his saints, but for the second coming, Jesus comes with his saints to rule and reign with us for a thousand years on the earth. Another difference between the rapture and the second coming of Christ is that the rapture can happen at any moment. In other words, there are no signs that need to happen that will precede the rapture. So over and over again in scripture, we are told to be ready, to be ready because no man knows the day nor the hour. It can happen at any time. However, the second coming of Jesus Christ, Jesus is very clear that many things are going to have to happen before he steps foot on the earth a second time. Antichrist, wars, rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, 
earthquakes, uh, strange things happening in the sky, this and that and the other. So these are signs that will precede the second coming of Jesus Christ. And then finally, at the rapture, Satan remains free to tempt and to destroy. But at the second coming of Jesus Christ, Satan will be bound for a thousand years. So these are just a few differences between the rapture and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Okay, the fourth reason is probably the most important reason for a pre-tribulation rapture, and this is the idea that the church must be seen as a different group of people than the nation of Israel. And so when you study the Old Testament, you study the purpose and the reason behind why God is allowing the tribulation period, it becomes very clear that this is a special, distinct period in time, seven years, where God is going to deal specifically with his chosen people, the Israelites. Notice what God said to a Jewish man named Daniel who lived during the Old Testament. It says in chapter 9, verse 24, a period of 70 sets of sevens has been decreed for your people, not the church, not Christians, not New Testament believers, and for your holy city to finish their rebellion, to put an end to their sin, to atone for their guilt, and to bring in everlasting righteousness. Notice also what God said to Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, another Jewish man who lived in the Old Testament. He said, in all history, there has never been such a time of terror. It will be a time of trouble for my people Israel, yet in the end, they will be saved. So I want you to notice these two very key verses here. It is clear that God has some unfinished business that he needs to take care of, specifically that as it relates to Israel. But notice what Dan, uh, Jeremiah said. It says that at the end, they are going to be saved. So what's going to happen during this tribulation period is that God God is going to pursue his people so that they will call upon him, even though they will be persecuted by the enemy during this time, they are going to call out and cry out to God, cry out, as Zechariah said, to the one whom they have pierced. And there's going to be a uh, restoration, if you will, a redemption of God's people, the chosen people, the Israelites. So if we distinguish the church from the nation of Israel, it is clear that these seven years of tribulation relate specifically to how God is going to deal with his people. And so the fifth and final reason is that there must be some time between the rapture and the second coming of Jesus Christ for some other events on God's prophetic timetable to take place. One of those events, if you remember, is the judgment seat of Christ. This can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15. And this is the idea that every Christian is one day going to stand before God and give an account, not for our sins, because those have been paid for on the cross through Jesus Christ and his blood, but for the, uh, the things that we've done, our deeds, our righteousness, our service, our stewardship, and all of those things. Well, there's got to be some time for that to happen. Also, when we see the church in Revelation chapter 19, uh, there is this unity between the church and Jesus Christ, and they're going to be united. It's called the marriage supper of the lamb. And so uh, we see that the church is seen or viewed as already being in heaven, preparing themselves for this beautiful event where they're going to come and be united with Christ. Well, if they're on earth, they can't be in heaven as well. Okay, so I know that was a lot of material, and this video is probably very long. I have no idea how long it is, but I really wanted to give you a clear and thorough explanation on this topic because many of you have been asking this question over and over again, and I just wanted to give you a perspective and also uh, several scriptures that I want you to go back and study on your own. 